Hello, STEM1 students. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, you're going to be learning about relations, mappings, tables, and graphs. And really, I should say you're going to be relearning. I think you actually have seen this in eighth grade before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this topic because hopefully this looks pretty familiar, okay? Um, th honestly, this is something that I think is kind of a common sense lesson. A lot of what we're going to learn today is stuff that just is a different way to represent data. And, you know, in a world that's so filled with data, a lot of times it's just knowing, you know, when to use what, what setup and depending on what career you get into, um, you could be representing data on a daily basis. So uh, first things first, we've been calling these items right here that I'm going to highlight We've been calling these pretty much ordered pairs all year long, okay? Which they definitely are. Um, another kind of fancy mathematical word for that is a relation. And so when we talk about relations, we're really talking about data sets. And generally speaking, when, with our relation, we're going to have an X and a Y, or an input and an output. And so for this first example, what we're going to do is just take this relation and represent it really three different ways, okay? So again, these highlighted sets of, of um, ordered pairs here, we're going to consider that our relation. And so if we're going to represent um, our relation as a table, this is really just thinking about this like your lab data. So um, down here, I'm just going to set up a ordered pair, or excuse me, yeah, basically an ordered pair. I'm going to adjust my font size so I can fit that. There we go. So the first ordered pair has an X that's 4 and also has a corresponding Y value that's 4. All right, so we're just, again, we're just writing these ordered pairs. So the next ordered pair has an input of 4 and an output of 3. No, that's not a typo. You'll, I'll explain it in just, uh, you'll see why that uh, duplicate X value exists. Um, an input of 6 is going to give us an output of negative 1. An input of 3 gives us an output of 5. And the last ordered pair up there had an input of 1 with an output of 2. All right, so again, it is literally just putting your data into columns. And every X has a corresponding Y that matches up with it. Okay, now for the mapping, um, it's pretty much the same concept. The only difference is we're going to treat it as a domain and a range. And if you remember, when we wrote our domains and ranges, we did not include duplicate values. And usually um, we list them small to big for, uh, since this isn't really a list, you don't necessarily have to put them small to big. So I'm just going to go down the column and... Um, once I get a duplicate value, I don't have to record that twice. So the X column, my domain, will have a 4, 6, 3, and 1. So 4, 6, 3, and 1. And that, that makes up our domain. Okay, our range are the Y value. So that's going to be 4, 3, negative 1, 5, and 2. See if I can remember that. So four, three, negative one, five, two. Okay, so in a mapping, I guess the, the next question is how do we know what domain value goes with what y or which range value? And it's very simple. You just draw an arrow pointing from each domain that it matches up with pointing to the range. And so my ordered pair 4, 4, I start at 4, I draw an arrow to 4. The next ordered pair is 4, 3, so I start at 4, and I draw an arrow to 3. And then I think all of these other ones just matched up um, directly as we see them here. So that is how you show a mapping. So. Um, it's again, it's very similar to a, a table. It's just this one lists it as a domain and range, and then we don't include the dip, duplicate values. Okay, uh, the graph is something we've been doing all year, so we're just basically graphing your ordered pairs. So I'll go back to the first one, four comma four. I'll just plot that on my graph. One two three four. One two three four. And then I believe the next one was 4, 3, which would go right here. 
and then we have 6 comma negative 1 should be right there we have 3 comma 5 should be right here and then 1 comma 2 and that's it that's that's just really different ways to represent um, all of these ordered pairs we see here, this is just three different ways to represent that. Okay. Um, on the back side of your handout, you're going to see just an explanation of, is this a function or is it not? And I want, and the one that's kind of obvious is, is this vertical line test. And we've been talking about that for a little while, but, uh, if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph and it intersects, um, the graph in more than one position, then it's not a function. So I'm going to say up here, it is not a function. And the reason it is not a function is because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. And I'm just going to abbreviate that VLT. Okay doesn't pass the vertical line test. Now, let's just say you were looking at a relation and you didn't know, you didn't feel like graphing it out. Well, I always look at my inputs. The inputs are my x values. If I have an x value that gets repeated, like this case here, this can't repeat. Can't have a duplicate x value. And, and the reason is that would mean that an input of four would produce two different outputs, okay? Not that you can't have those ordered pairs, but again, the question is, is it a function? So I can tell that it is not a function because an input of four produces two different outputs. Each input should only have one output to be considered a function. All right. So those are your key ideas for today. Um, what I'd like you to do is just give this one a try where it says your turn. Uh, when you're done, I you do need to show that to a teacher before you leave class today. All right. Thanks.